Hello, in this presentation, we will enter the closing process into our worksheet with one journal entry. In order to do this, we want to take a look at what we have so far in terms of the process, in terms of the worksheet. What we have here is our worksheet. It's starting with the adjusted trial balance. Remember where that came from. That means that we have done the financial statements from the adjusted trial balance. Everything has been entered for the month or year, and now we need to set ourselves up for the next month or year and therefore change this from the adjusted trial balance to a post-closing trial balance. We'll do this with a similar worksheet as we've seen with the adjusted trial balance where in this case we start with the adjusted trial balance. We will post our closing journal entries, in this case one journal entry, one big journal entry, <laughs> and then we'll have our post-closing trial balance once this has been completed. We also see our accounting equation up top which is just picking up the uh, information in each section we see that assets equal liabilities as in and equity and that'll be the case as we go through this process scrolling down we see the uh, format of this we got the asset accounts in green liabilities in orange and then the equity light blue and then the income statement accounts revenue and expenses in the dark blue we see net income at 577,000 that is the 800,000 minus the 120 minus the 48 minus the 12 minus 7 minus the 36 summed up here meaning the credit in revenue minus all the debits in the expenses gives us the net income so these are going to be the temporary accounts that we want to close out all the revenue accounts and the draws we're going to close those out to the capital account our ending goal being to have all these accounts zero after this process and the capital account is the account that will uh, be used to make up the difference. So just to see what's going to happen and if we could see this you know, very easily uh, without doing a journal entry, what this number needs to be. Uh, so we don't do this, I'm just, this is just a demonstration. We're going to say if we just delete all these numbers, we'll be out of balance by 568,000. That means that the assets if we add all these up, minus the 70 a contra asset is uh, 587,100, minus the liabilities, debits of assets, minus the liabilities of credits and the contra account of a credit, gives us the 568,000. That's what we need to be in balance here. So that means that this capital account, if we make all these zero, this capital account needs to be a credit of 568,000 and that'll put us back in balance. So this in essence is our post-closing trial balance. That's what we want to do, but we want to do it by not just deleting everything and putting in a number there. We want to do that by doing adjusting entries or closing entries. So I'm gonna undo this. We're gonna get back to this process. That's where we want to be. So in order to do this, we're gonna do this with a one-step process. The one-step process is really nice because it, it's the quickest way to get to where we want to be and you can see to do that all we have to do is just change all these accounts to get to where we want to be it's also useful because uh, when you're thinking about different processes you got to know what's going to you know what the closing process does and this is the quickest way to kind of just visualize in your mind what's happening the four-step process which we'll go over later and is in most textbooks will give uh, a good understanding and has its purposes and its reasons which we'll discuss but uh, the one-step process can give you that quick visualization as you work more complex problems that are going over time periods, over more than just one time period, so you can know what's happening with that closing process. So I'm going to post this. We're, gonna, we're just going to build this journal entry. We're going to post it here, but I'm actually going to post it down, uh, down here, right about, we'll post it right here starting, just so we're close to the accounts that we'll be dealing with, which will be these revenue accounts. And since we only have one journal entry, we should have plenty of room. So we're going to start with this revenue. Uh, we're going to start, sorry, with draws. Everything from the draws on down will be closed out. All of the income statement accounts and this temporary account of draws. So we'll start with draws. It's got a debit balance. Draws is kind of the most confusing account most of the time because it's not part of the income statement. You can see it's not included in the income statement or the net income calculation, but it's still temporary. And uh, we need to know that draws is bringing down equity. We need to just know that draws has a debit balance. How do we make it go down then? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm gonna copy the draws. So I'll right click and copy the draws. I'm gonna put that up top. 
in cell B11, I'm in cell B11, right click and I'm going to paste just the formatting, pasting 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to use some formatting to show the indentation. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go to the Home tab, Alignment, Increase the Indentation. And you could do that if, the, if they're blocking the formatting uh, because of a save, you know, a protected worksheet. You can double click and just spacebar three times to indent it a bit. And we're going to put a credit here in, in cell D11. We're going to represent our credit both in the outer column and with a negative uh, of 10,000. That's what we're going to need to make this zero. Now I'm starting with a credit. Note we're kind of violating the rule of putting the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. And uh, that's going to be the case because it's going to be easier for us to build it. Uh, and ease of building and, and ease of going back and seeing what you did really kind of trumps that rule a lot of the time. But we can go back and then adjust it after we have built it to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. So we're going to post this now. So we are in cell H16. We're in cell H16. We're going to say equals and then point to that 10,000. And that'll bring this balance, it's a debit, down by the 10,000 to zero. That puts us out of balance here. We've achieved our first goal of making the draws account zero. We're just going to continue with that goal as we go down the rest of the statement. So next we have the income statement accounts starting with revenue. Revenue has a credit of 800,000 in it. We need to make it to go down. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, therefore. So we're going to debit revenue. So I'm going to copy revenue, right click and copy revenue. We're going to put that in cell B12. So we're in B12, right click, I'm going to paste that one, two, three values only. So we will paste that there and I'm going to put the amount. It's a credit here. So we're going to do the opposite debit in order to make it go down 800,000. Now we're not in balance, we're just building this journal entry, but I'm going to post it as we go because that'll give us an idea of what we're doing as we go, why we're doing it as we go. We're just building a journal entry, doing whatever we need to do in order to make all these accounts go to zero. And then we're going to have to do whatever we have to do at the balance to make our journal entry in balance. We'll discuss that when we get there. We are in cell H17 and we're going to post this. So we're going to say this equals and point to that 800,000 that bringing this credit balance down by that debit to zero. So we've achieved the goal of bringing that down to zero. Now we have all the expenses. Note all the expenses are debit balance accounts, all then needing credits in order to make them go down. So we'll have some repetition in our process here. We've got wages expense has a debit. We need to credit it to make it go down. So I'm going to copy wages expense. We're going to bring this up top in B13, right click and paste 1, 2, 3. I'm going to indent by going to the Home tab, Alignment Group, Increase, Indentation. And we're going to put this in the credit column in D13, D13. There's a debit here. We need to make it go down with a credit represented in the outer column as well as in our worksheet with a negative number. So negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0 and enter. Excel formats it for us, which is nice. Then we're going to go down to H18. We're in cell H18 equals, and we're going to point to that 120. That's a credit. This is a debit. Those are opposites. It's going to make it go down to zero. So we're brought that one to zero. We're going to do the same thing for the utilities. Now note that we could use some uh, copying and pasting in Excel to make this go faster, but we're learning the process here, not just of Excel, of, but of posting this. So we're going to go through the tedium of each account and do this each time. So we're going to say that we got the 40. And by the way, I will show you how to do it a bit quicker once we have completed this process. All right. So this one's going to be 48,000 debit. We need to do the opposite thing to it. Credit. So we're going to copy utilities expense. We're going to put that in cell B14. Right click and paste one, two, three going to go up to the home tab, alignment group, increase the indentation. Then we're going to go in the outer column D14 and we're going to put negative 48,000. Then we're going to post that. So we're going to be over here in H19. 
equals in H19 and just point to that 48,000. That's a credit, this is a debit, those opposites making this account go down to zero. Next, we'll do the same for insurance. We're just building our journal entry over here, step by step, doing what we need to do to make these go down to zero. So insurance has a debit of 12,000. We need to credit it to make it go down. So we're gonna copy the insurance expense, put that in cell B15, next area in our uh, journal entry, paste it, and we're gonna put that in the credit column and also represent it with a negative number of 12,000. Then we'll post that. We're gonna go over here to H20. We're gonna say equals and then scroll over here to the 12,000. That's a credit. Uh, this is a debit. Those are opposites making the account go from 12,000 debit down by 12,000 credit to zero. Two more times, we've got the supplies here. Supplies has a debit balance of 7,000. We need to make it go down. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, a credit. Gonna copy the supplies, right clicking on supplies, copy those supplies, putting them in the next spot in our journal entry B16. Right click and paste one, two, three, values only. I'm also gonna indent these two cells. I'm gonna highlight these two, home tab, alignment, increase and indent because they are credits. You could do that by double clicking and hitting the space bar three times. I'm gonna put our cursor in uh, D16, negative 7,000. We're gonna post that out then. I'll just hit enter, there's the 7,000 formatted. And we'll be over here in H21. Within H21, we will say equals point to that 7,000, bringing the debit balance down by the credit of 7,000 to zero. One more time, we'll do this for depreciation. So here's depreciation, 36,000 debit balance. We're gonna bring it down by doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. Copy and depreciation expense, right click and copy. Pasting that in the next available space, which is in B17, right click and paste one, two, three. Then we're gonna to go to the home tab, alignment, increase, indent. Then we're gonna to go to D17 and put the amount of a credit represented in the outer column and with a negative 36,000. Then we'll post that out. So we're gonna post that to H22. We are in H22 equals and point to that 36,000. This is a debit, that's a credit, that's gonna make this go down to zero. So now we have achieved the goal, we've made all of these go down to zero. However, we are out of balance by the 567,000. That's what we need to do to put this back in balance. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna just show you that in one other format. We're gonna sum up the debits, we're gonna sum up the credits, we're gonna see what the difference is what we need to do to make this in balance. So I'm just gonna sum the credits here and sum the debits. You don't have to do this, I'm doing this very quickly, I understand. But we're just gonna sum those up and notice they're obviously not in balance. And we can also see that very quickly by just highlighting these cells and Excel will highlight and sum up everything in that highlighted area or the selected area and that's uh, 567,000. So if we subtract this out, we get the same thing. The eight minus the negative, or plus the negative number, subtracting the two. The difference between the 800 and the 233 is that 567,000. So that's what we need to make us in balance. That's our 567 we need to put this journal entry in balance. So we're just gonna, I call that the plug, we're just gonna plug that in here, and that's gonna go right here. And I'm gonna do that with, a formula. I could just type in negative 567, but I'm going to use a formula to do that. And what I want to do is sum this up. If I sum this up, it will give me a positive 567. We want a negative 567. So instead of hitting equals, I'm going to select negative and then type in SUM. That's the sum function and select the sum function. And then we want this whole uh, two columns. So we want from here C11 all the way down to D17, uh, C11 to D17, and enter, and there it is. There's the 567. Now we just need to know where it should go. And we're gonna put that to the capital account. So I'm gonna copy the capital, 
I'm gonna put that in uh, B18, right click and paste one, two, three. Then I'm gonna increase the indentation, home tab, alignment, increase indentation. And then we're gonna post that to the capital account. So we're here in H15, we're gonna say equals, and then we're gonna to point to that to 567. This is a credit, that's a credit, those are the same things. It's gonna make this capital account to go up to uh, 568,000. So here's at the end of the day, now that we've achieved our goal, we've made all of these zero, yet we're still in balance. How? because we entered all of that information into the owner capital account. So here it is in the capital account. So note this process is, you wanna be able to visualize this process very easily or very quickly because when you're working with, with different problems and you're seeing how reports are relating, you gotta know that from one time period to the next time period, these temporary accounts will close and then start over again. And so even if you're using software, you need to be able to do that pretty quickly and be able to say, ah, that's because these temporary accounts are only being represented for this certain time period. And the single step process is the quickest way to visualize that or put that into a worksheet uh, for, for understanding or working through problems. Uh, so note here though, the capital account went up by, and you can compare this to the calculation of the statement of owner's equity. This is basically the beginning balance. And then it went up by net income, which is this minus this, or 577,000, 577,000. And it went down by the draws. So we just did it all in one lump sum, rather than breaking out income and draws, as is done in the statement of owner's equity. And then so we, went, we took that and we increased it by the net income, decreased it by the draws to get to our ending uh, equity balance. Now last thing to consider is that uh, notice of our journal entry of course is not quite in the perfect format meaning we don't have the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. We have this one debit down here. We could reformat this. I could move this up to the top and put the credits on the bottom if we so choose. I'm not going to do it at this time because I, I do think that if we're doing a long journal entry like this and if we're doing it by hand or outside of a system the system will always put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom as basically a computer system rule. If we're creating the financial statements, however, if it's a complex journal entry, we might want to leave it in whatever format helps us to better go back later and see what we did. Uh, and to me, this basically kind of shows exactly what we did because it starts here at the first account and goes straight down. If we format it so that the revenue is on top because it's a debit, then you know it could it could start to get more confusing on what we did in order to to put the proper formatting in so it's up to you on on to make that kind of judgment call when you're doing these types of transactions